where I was going with it, you know, as far as um, the the thing that came up was the uh, this guy didn't know Ken or me or for that, you know, for that thing, and, and um, the fact that he uh, that he died in my arms, you know, and, and um, I think it was it had to be a couple of years soul searching, pretty much, going, God. The bullet was aimed at you, though. Yeah, the, the bullet was for me, and. Uh, he couldn't tell the difference between a Filipino and a, you know, and a Mexican. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, what came out of that was years and years of stuff, you know, going, and I couldn't figure it out. I, um, I kept going and, and I felt like uh, I had to carry, carry on pretty much uh, with what was left. You know, and and, uh, and all I had was my artwork and um, stage and stuff. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and so Jim Franklin found the actual shooter. Yes, he didn't? did. Uh, he uh, got some um, some clues and put them together, and and, uh, and they caught the guy within the next two days. Uh, he found. Um, and talked to his mom, you know, and, and um, the shooter's mother. The shooter's mother, yeah, and got her to more or less tell him pretty much where he was going to be at the time, and, you know. And <laughs> but the whole thing again is is very surreal, you know. Uh, I lost so, it so quickly. It happened just over a short period of time. Uh, and it was over nothing, you know, and 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 that's what's. The hard part is that um, uh, he, Ken, uh, was in, in the wrong place at the wrong time, and, and I didn't even ha have an inkling that of, of what was going to come down because uh, in the bar business you meet uh, a lot of people that are, you know, yeah. out of control and. And you try to kind of just deal with it, the situation, and and then be done with it. And so I thought I was done with it because uh, I threw the guy out, and uh, it wasn't a confrontation. It wasn't anything like that. The guy swung at me. I caught him by the wrist, and I spun him around, and he fell on his butt. That's all that happened. And I said, listen. You don't want me coming out here because number one, you're gonna get hurt, and then the next thing is you know, you're gonna wind up in jail. So go home, and that's it. You know, I went back to inside. We had to get rid of the the crowd. The concert was over. Then after that, I had to jump on stage and take care of the gear for the for the guys and the bands and stuff like that. So it had to be at least. A good hour and a half, somewhere around there. By the time that happened, and by the time that I, you know, was was just doing my usual thing of picking up stuff and locking up and going home. Yeah. And I don't know where Ken appears, and he yells at me, says that he has this uh, frame for me. It's in his van, let's go get it. And then, so I said, fine, let's go pick it up or whatever. And so we're both walking outside the door out, as we take just a step or two just past the, the door there. Pow! And that's all, one shot. And he takes off. The guy was in his car, window down on the passenger side. It had to be at least 40 feet or so, and he got him square in the forehead, just small, nine so, mils. So what ultimately happened to the shooter? Is he out there now? He's dead. He's gone. Oh. Yeah. Um, by natural causes, not by yours truly. In fact, <laughs> I was warned when they released him that if he wound up dead, yeah. they were going to be looking for me. And I said, no, man. 
he took away from me. He was my best friend. I mean, you know, it's just that started it. And then since then, um, having to to go through all those years of soul searching again, you know, um, there was something that was unfinished, and um, and looking at at it again, over and over and over again. Um, what was my role in this? You know, uh, normally, like I said, I, yes, I would have traded places with him, but it didn't happen that way. So, uh, you know, I don't want to say that it changed my life because I was already heading in a direction. And I had goals, and I had uh, a family that was, you know, we were growing, you know, and. and um, uh, it did kind of put me in a spot where I had to be uh, a little bit more conscientious about situations and my friends and you know and my relatives and that kind of stuff. I wanted them closer. I didn't want to lose anymore. Yeah. You know? and, and so that part of it, and then I think. Uh, I, w I didn't want to quit what I was where where I was going. I had I had like I said I had goals already set to be the best painter, the best artist in the world, and, you know, and that kind of thing. And that didn't stop. It just kind of uh, I think I bonded more uh, with Ken now that he, that he was gone. It kind of pushed me farther. Amped deeper you up. into uh, you know that Good. part of it, you know, and, and uh, inspiration from I wasn't afraid, you know, and I never have been afraid, but uh, to lose somebody that close and and um, and then come to grips with it, uh, I was I was blessed. People all say he was the best artist of the group too, you know. He was so precise and <laughs> and. Uh, I, uh, Duke says that to me all the time. Well, Jim was Jim was our mentor, Jim Franklin, and um, we all loved him for for what he brought to the table, the inspiration, and, and and of course the talent and all that, you know. So yeah, it was all great. It was all great, and he was part of it, you know. He was part of it. You know, so.